Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second of our uh, Lenten luncheons for 2018. Uh, glad everyone could be here. Hope you've had uh, enough food. And uh, I know there's somebody here that uh, missed my not telling any jokes last week. Uh, so I've, I've got just one real quick one today. And uh, does anyone know why melons don't marry? Why melons can't marry? That's right. They, they can't elope. Our speaker got that one, so... Uh, at this time, I'll ask uh, Pastor uh, Jeff to uh, come forward and say grace. Good afternoon. So good to have you here. Thumbs up to this great meal, yes? yes. Okay. Well, um, 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 we'll thank our ladies later, um, but we're so glad you're here. We have, obviously, a meal next week. I think it's Seafood Newberg, but I'll let Bib Jill, the Jim tell you about that. But first and foremost, let's thank God for the food that we have in front of us and our assembly here. Gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the sunshine and the, the continuing journey to spring. Thank you for the food in front of us. Thank you for the hands and hearts that prepared it for us and help it helps us to nourish our lives. Thank you for the ministry of blessings in a backpack. And we all hope to grow and in your love, especially through this ministry and the witness to you. All this we ask through your name that is holy. Amen. Thank you. And... Uh... Speaking of next week, uh, Pastor had it right, it is uh, Seafood Newberg, and for those of you who don't like or can't eat seafood, there will be non-seafood alternatives, so uh, don't let uh, the menu keep you home. Our speaker will be our new Ward 4 City Councilor, Susan Nicastro, and uh, Susan uh, is really... Uh, taken the job to heart, working hard, especially not only for Ward 4, but for all of Campello, and we appreciate what she's doing, so uh, it's an opportunity to come and hear her vision, as well as uh, ask questions about things that are going on, so uh, we hope you'll be here. Um, today, uh, we've invited uh, the person who is uh, organizing and put together the Blessings in a Backpack program in Brockton. And uh, I'll let her tell you and her uh, associates tell you all about it. Uh, but a little bit of a background uh, because we're kind of uh, partners in this uh, great event here at First Lutheran Church and at our Food for Friends Food Pantry. Uh, it was in March of 2015 uh, that I was at a Brockton Area Hunger Network meeting and uh, Ward 2 school committee member at the time, Andy Robinson, and uh, Tom Burke, who uh, is the food service director for Chatwells that handles the Brockton School Department food, were uh, at the meeting telling all of us about this uh, great new opportunity in Brockton to help the uh, school kids, uh, blessings in a backpack, and uh, how everyone could help. And uh, I ended up speaking quite a bit with Andy afterwards uh, as to how we could help because uh, blessings in a backpack in a lot of ways didn't qualify uh, to be a client of the Greater Boston Food Bank. Uh, we worked with the Greater Boston Food Bank to be sure that Food for Friends could pick up food that we could then uh, transfer over to Blessings in a Backpack, and uh, we've been doing this now for just about three years, and uh, they did a lot of their packing of food over at the high school, and most recently they've been doing it here in the uh, Hillston Gym at the Fruit Center, and uh, 
We're storing the food for them until the school department comes and takes it. And uh, so it's great to be partnering with them on this uh, great ministry to the school kids in Brockton. And so I will now welcome Megan Schoenberg and uh, let her introduce all of her associates that she has with her today. And uh, welcome, Megan. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Thanks to all of you for giving us the opportunity to talk about Blessings in a Backpack today. Uh, Blessings in a Backpack mobilizes communities, individuals, and resources to provide food on the weekends for elementary school children across America who might otherwise go hungry. We started our chapter in Brockton in November of 2013, delivering our first bag to the Kennedy School in January of 2014, and we've grown considerably since then. There are more than 13.1 million children in this country who are at risk of hunger. The consequences of hunger are much more than a growling stomach. Poor nutrition can result in a weaker immune system, increased hospitalization, lower IQ, shorter attention spans, and lower academic achievement. That's why programs at the schools in the city providing free uh, lunch and breakfast for kids are so critical to the development of these young kids. It's estimated that upwards of 80% of Brockton Elementary School students would qualify for a traditional free lunch or reduced lunch program. That means that 80% of, of families have difficulty putting enough food on the table for their children between the ages of 5 and 11. It's quite an amazing number. The need is really great in the city. Many of these kids only really eat when they go to school. Blessings in a Backpack looks to provide kid-friendly foods that can be prepared without a mom or a dad over the weekend. I grew up in this city in a really supportive family, very active in the community. I went to schools here, absolutely a shining light in the city. I had the privilege of meeting kids like me from all sorts of cultures, economic backgrounds, and family dynamics. Kids like me, not because they had the same upbringing, but they were concerned about the same things, grades, trying to figure out how to fit into the grand scheme of things, sometimes getting lost in the whole grand scheme. We've all been there, some of us still are, I suppose, but I never had to worry if I would have something to eat at night. I can't say the same for all of my classmates. When I first read about this program in People Magazine, I wasn't looking to start a program like this. I was just a regular mom, getting my hair cut, and I looked at this People magazine and saw a picture of this beautiful boy who was about the same age uh, as my oldest child at the time. He was about seven or eight. And he was making comments about how the program had helped him. They showed a picture of the bag of food that he got on Fridays. There was a granola bar, a juice box, a can of soup, an apple, and some mac and cheese. Now when you really consider that, and when I consider how much food I feed to my kids over the weekends, it just paled in comparison. That small bag of food was that impactful to this little kid. My mind returned to my hometown where I grew up. The thing is, I think the biggest thing that I've learned over the last five years is that most people want to be able to help, but they don't necessarily know how, and they feel like they can't make an impact on a, on a big problem like this one. That little boy and that small bag of food, I could suddenly see how I could make an impact, maybe not on the big problem, but just one kid at a time. Students across the country who are being supported by Blessings in a Backpack surveyed, and they, they were surveyed, and they said that in addition to no longer feeling weekend hunger pains, 59% find it easier to learn in school. 60% don't get in as much trouble. 78% feel cared for by their community. 71% feel they're helping their family. And 60% of children report that their school attendance is better. Those bags of food we assemble for Friday deliveries are more than nutrition. They're a reminder to these kids who have varying levels of support at home that there are some grown-ups and some kids like them who care. They're at, they have allies that are trying to help. It's like a hug in a bag every Friday. Today's cultural climate is confusing and sometimes very scary. I assume most of us have reflected on recent events, especially the ones in school, and have to ask the question, why? How have we gotten to this point? 
Well, I believe there are many factors that have gotten us to this point. I do believe that the only way to pivot is to support each other and try to find a way to move forward. It's a whole lot harder to support others when you feel alone and misunderstood. I hope Blessings in a Backpack helps the kids we support remember they are not forgotten. A quote from Lily Tomlin often comes to mind when I reflect on my personal journey in the last five years. I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about that. Then I realized I was somebody. Well, I brought some somebodies with me today. A few teachers from, from the city uh, that have stories about students in their classroom and uh, blessings in a backpack in general. These folks are true community leaders who are at the front lines of fighting childhood hunger. So I'd like to welcome them up one by one and they can give their stories. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jamie Milnamo. Megan is actually my sister. And I am a teacher at the Kennedy School. And something that happened to me 15 or 16 years ago, my first year teaching, was actually um, a, a way for us to start a conversation about how we can help. I had a little girl in my classroom. She spoke very little English. And at um, the time for Christmas break, Everybody was celebrating because it was time to go home and have vacation and she was sobbing uncontrollably and I asked her what was wrong and she, like I said, not a whole lot of English but she said, I have no food at home, I only eat at school. So I sent her on her way for 10 days without any food. Um, after that point I started bringing little things and slipping them in her backpack but that was helping just one child. So that was a, a story that I sh shared with my mom and my sister and we sort of started talking about what a great need there was here in Brockton for so many students and so many families. Um, since then obviously a lot has happened. Um, myself and Kelly Nemenko who you'll hear from in a few minutes deliver the food along with my mother every Friday at the Kennedy School and we could tell you hundreds of stories about the wonderful things kids say to us but this past Friday there was a little girl who came and we were offering um, jars of peanut butter and bags of cereal for anybody who wanted it in addition to the bag that they were taking home because they were again on school vacation. And I, I don't know much about this child. She's only been at our school for a few months, but I do know that she has a large family. So I said to her, how many people do you have living at your house? And of course, as only a second grader can, she starts telling me her life story and the 75 people she has at her house. But she actually lives with 11 people. And I said, well, would you like to take some cereal home? And she said, oh yes, there are 11 of us, but we have no food at our house. So I, of course, then gave her three bags of cereal and two jars of peanut butter and I gave her everything I could but we hear stories like that every single week of kids who without this support would truly not have anything to eat from lunchtime on Friday until they come back to school on Monday or worse over a vacation have you know nine or ten days where they haven't had any nourishing food um, and I just want to share very quickly as a parent um, my daughter attends my school with me and she helps with the packing parties with blessings in a backpack and she knows that we deliver the food and she understands it's a very private thing that you don't talk about it but she has two of her friends in her class that she knows get the blessings in a backpack food on Fridays so at the packing party she makes sure to tie two knots in the top of the bag and she asks me to specifically hand deliver those bags to her friends so that she can feel like she's making an impact for her friends, which I think is a really special thing for my daughter to have that connection, but to also understand that it's kids that she's sitting in class with every day that are going home to nothing. Um, so it's been a very powerful thing to be part of as a teacher, but also as a mom and a member of this community that I love so much. So here is Kelly Nemenko, um, who can talk about her experiences. Thank you. I don't know if I'm tall enough. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kelly Nemenko. I'm also a teacher at the Kennedy School. Um, I joined the Kennedy about four years ago from a different school in Brockton, and one of the best experiences of being part of the Kennedy so far has been being brought into the Blessings in a Backpack community. Every Friday, I have the honor um, and pleasure of being part of the delivery service. We 
do it late afternoon. We make sure to get all of our treats on our carts and we kind of divvy up the school. Someone will take third grade or fifth grade or second and we kind of attack it as a team. And it's probably my favorite part of the week and the most humbling part of the week as well. I usually take the older students and so I take my car and I head down the fifth grade hallway and there's these fifth graders who Monday through Thursday act like they're so big and tough and cool and as soon as you walk in their classroom or you come to get them, they all of a sudden give you hugs like they are little kindergartners. They are happy to see you. I hear more God bless you's and have a great weekend. And how was your week, Ms. Nemanko? And they're just so happy. The, the sense of relief that you see on their faces, their bodies, their backpacks are open and ready. Um, I have a story of uh, our fifth grade classroom our English language learners, we had a special delivery one year of some loaves of bread. And we unfortunately didn't have enough loaves of bread to give to every student, so we kind of tried to figure out who is in the most need of that loaf of bread. And when I went to the fifth grade classroom, I only had, let's say, four loaves of bread, but there were five students. And one of the students was very disappointed, and her friend turned to her and gave her her loaf of bread and said, you can have it because I have bread at home already for this weekend. So it's even developing a sense of community amongst the children that they need to be kind and look out for one another and share, and it's just, it's... It's really heartwarming that every Friday, you know, I leave for the weekend and my children are very well taken care of. They have food on the table. It's not something they have to worry about. But it's nice on Friday to know that I've somehow had a part in making sure that those kids have something in their belly as well. And they also, they always ask, is there extra because I have a sibling at home or my mom really likes when I bring home the granola bars. It's her favorite. And so it's not just looking out for themselves in their belly they're looking out for each other as well so it's it's a domino effect that what we're doing that maybe these children in this position will someday grow up to be doing the same for others as well so thank you for being here today and listening it's it's great because everyone being a part of it is going to make that big impact so thank you Hi, my name is Audrey Mancini. I'm a fifth grade teacher at the Kennedy School. And um, I was going to share a student with one of my students a few years ago. Um, I had a student who used to, whenever it was time to line up for lunch, she would run to the front of the line. And I would always say to them, you don't need to worry. We're all going the same place. They're going to be serving the same food. Um, and I never thought much about it because we have lots of students that rush into line. But then a few weeks later, we actually started another program that we have breakfast in the classroom. And I was just explaining to the students that each morning they'd have the opportunity to take breakfast. And the student loudly said, that's great. Then I won't be starving anymore. And so I asked him, what's, what do you mean? And he said, lunch is the only time I know I'll eat. And because his father works and he works the night shift, if he wasn't able to stay awake, he wouldn't eat dinner that night. So sometimes he was rushing to get in line because he knew that that was the meal he was going to have. So the breakfast became very important for him, and once I heard that, I talked to Jamie, and we were able to get start having him get blessings in a backpack on the weekend. And it made a huge difference for him, because I started to see he, was no more, he wasn't anxious as much, and I realized that a lot of the times that anxiety was coming from worrying about when he'd be able to eat. Um, it also helped to create a sense of community in our classroom, because he, he said that in front of all the students. And they started to, without asking, bringing him food, or if they had extra breakfast, they would leave it for him. He started to make more connections in the classroom um, through this one thing that he talked about. Um, and what I realized in the meeting when I said, you know, we're all going to the same place, for him this was a very different thing. And I'm glad that as he was able to get the bag from Blessings in a Backpack, he didn't need to rush to the front of the line anymore because he knew he was going to be taken care of not only from the bag that he received from Blessings, but his classmates were taking care of him too. Um, and that's one thing I notice when I have been at the packing parties, is that it's not just helpful to the students that are receiving the food, it's helpful for the people that participate in the packing. Because you have children there, you have Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts that participate, you have high school students, and uh, teachers and members of the community that all come together, and it really helps them to feel like they're 
getting to be part of a solution to a huge problem. So I see it as two different things. Not only do we get to nourish our students with the food, but you're nourishing the people that participate with the feeling of knowing that they're helping their fellow community members that need that hand lended to them. Um, so thank you for listening, and I really appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you about that. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thanks so much for giving us the opportunity to be here with you today. I have a couple of stories. I want to tell you a little bit about um, my background and what I teach. Um, I'm what's called a sheltered English immersion teacher. I have English language learners, and I have the little ones. We have full day kindergarten in the city. We're very fortunate. Um, I'm a bilingual employee. My children, uh, for the most part, come from Haiti, but I also have um, low incidence children. That means that they can come to me from um, every corner of the world and um, join my class. Um, I want to tell you a story about a little one who came to me just a short while ago. Um, he's very small. He's adorable. He's full of energy. Uh, my colleagues know him. Um, he goes to, he has breakfast with us. He also goes, you know, to lunch with his class. And he has an older sister. And this little one eats every morsel that's given to him in the morning. No matter what it is, he will eat it. And his sister has started coming over to the table. She happens to eat lunch at the same time he does. So she was coming to the table and checking to see that he had eaten and checking to see if he had any leftover food. So she stood there. Um, her peers are at lunch also. And the two of them shared that same plate of food. Um, because of blessings in a backpack, it's you know, such an emotional thing for me. That little guy now takes food home on the weekend for his family. And I want to give you a little bit of background, too. When my kids come to this country, one of the hardest things to get used to is the food. They're used to their grandmothers making food for them, their aunts, their community members, where they've grown up. And the food here is so different from the food um, where they lived. But one universal thing about um, blessings in a backpack is that it's my five-year-old or four-year-old's contribution to their family. They go home on a Friday. They compare what they have in their bags. They have the same things. And they, uh, it's their contribution. They don't have jobs. They can't go to Shaw's or Price Right or Market Basket. But they do come home with that food to share with their families. Um, food is welcoming. When you first come to this country, and you come to kindergarten, your first school experience, food is welcoming. The church is welcome, our kids. Food is welcoming. It's something that we all partake of together. And I think to provide food for these little ones is so important. Um, I'll end on a, a very positive note. Last um, Friday, when we were packing up to go home, you guys were a little bit later. There was a lot going on. We had a Chinese New Year celebration. And um, the people who delivered the backpack um, products to us were a little bit late. So one of my guys was sitting next to me, and he said, are they coming? I said, well, of course they're coming. And as Jamie said, too, there was extra cereal and peanut butter and everything. They were so thrilled. So because of your program and how you're helping us, um, our little bellies are full, and uh, they're part of the Brockton community. So thank you. So as you can see or hear from uh, the teachers that came here today, our program in Brockton is, is really a true community effort. In addition to the countless volunteers that help us to pack and distribute these bags, I have to say that we benefit from a strong partnership from uh, Chartwells, which uh, Jim already mentioned. Um, Signature Healthcare has adopted uh, 50 students in the program. And the food pantry, pantry run right here is uh, offering us, as you mentioned, Jim, uh, space to store food, packing space, um, as well as uh, sources some of our staple foods for the kids, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you to all of you. 
Donations to the program go directly to our students. We're supporting 300 of them at this point at seven different schools in the city. And uh, maybe we can't support all 80% of the students that need the help, but we hope to think that we're doing our part one kid at a time. So thanks so much. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm curious. Um, you know, this is sort of a, a, a concern. What do kids do here in Rockland in the summer? So there are a number of different programs uh, that are set up in the summer that I don't, I am not intimately familiar with, but it's a question that comes up quite often. Sue can speak to oh, can you? Great, awesome. That's a great question. Uh, that um, through this administration in the city, there are grants for, and Janet, you might know about them also, there are playground grants and several sites throughout the city that whole families can come and have their lunch. Um, I remember teaching one summer at the Baker School and entire families uh, would come in and have their lunch with our kids, you know, when they were having lunch. So it's through the summer programs set up at the different playgrounds, the James Edgar, and all through the city. And uh, let's hope that those grants will continue because they continue to feed kids um, throughout that summer period. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And Brockton After Dark is a sports-oriented uh, program, which is awesome. And uh, they do eat there, too. So there's a, quite an opportunity in the summer, thank goodness. Yes? Uh, volunteer opportunities, if somebody's interested, how are you going to find out we um, have a Facebook page, um, facebook.com slash, I think it's Brockton Backpack, so you can definitely look us up on Facebook, and we post our packing events uh, every six to eight weeks or so, we pack food. Uh, we sometimes host it here, and sometimes it's hosted at the high school, but it all gets posted up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, so um, what goes in the backpack? So I mentioned that we try to provide kid-friendly foods, and so when we first started this out, I sat down my own three kids and said what would be great to get in a bag every week. So we have, uh, I think it's six different menus that we use. We try to add two entrees, two snacks, and a fruit at a minimum, and then hopefully we throw in you know, one more entree or something. Typically, um, our staple foods are uh, soup, tuna fish, canned chicken, um, uh, some sort of like canned uh, pasta dinner, like a ravioli. Uh, and then for snacks, it's typically uh, granola bars, um, oatmeal, uh, applesauce is one of the fruits. We sometimes do raisins or craisins, um, Nutrigrain bars, all things that, that kids can, um, uh, can choose and something that's relatively healthy but that they'll embrace as well. Uh, when we think about entrees, we definitely want to think about the fact that some of these kids, um, as one of the stories was shared, <coughs> excuse me, one of the stories was shared that some of these kids don't have support at home sometimes, um, so they have to be able to uh, prepare it by themselves. Uh, so we try not to do things like, uh, you know, a box of mac and cheese that they'd have to boil um, water or something like that. It's typically, you know, canned food. Yes, Grace? Can you pack enough um, bags for the week for like um, vacation? That's a great question, Grace. So Grace is my daughter, and she's been packing bags with us since the very beginning. So thanks for the question, Grace. Um, for the for the vacation weeks, we try to add a little extra. So Jamie mentioned the um, peanut butter and, uh, and the cereal. Uh, so we try to add some additional foods that will last a little bit longer. So a can of soup is typically you know, one sitting, but a, a jar of peanut butter could potentially last a full week. That's when we typically add in uh, you know, some bread or something like that as well. But the, one of the things that we have to take into account is that these are little kids who are carrying this home, so we'd love to you know, really load up the backpacks, but there's just so much that they can carry, too. <laughs> yes? Which other schools and how are kids, which kids are selected? 
The kids are selected, we uh, work with the guidance counselors or the adjustment counselors in order to decide which kids appear to have the greatest need. Um, the ideal situation would be that we'd be able to give every kid in the school um, a bag, but that's, that's not economically possible at the moment. Uh, but we do work with the adjustment counselors. They pick the kids. Um, I never see the list. Uh, only the teachers that distribute the food see the list.